In this video, I want to talk about the reactions of acetals, it means ox means hydrogens to form hydrozones and, and, and semi-carbazides to form chemo to form semi-carbazones. Okay, and this video is purely on, you know, could do you see the pattern? You need to know these reactions, you need to know how um what products we will get and also if we hydrolyze them backwards, what, what are the, the starting materials or real the products in, in, in a certain sense. Okay, so let's start. So if I take this molecule here, I take cyclopentanone and I add ammonia. Okay, so if I add uh, ammonia in acid, what will I get? Remember what I said in the previous videos. It's a pattern here. So anytime I could lose two hydrogens, I'm always going to lose two hydrogens with, with, with the nitrogen chemistry. So I'm going to keep my my double bond. It's now bonded to the nitrogen and I lose two hydrogens. So therefore, the product must be this. Okay. And you could just see all you're doing is just taking the molecule and replacing it, the nitrogen for the oxygen and losing two hydrogens. Okay. Now what about this one? Okay, what if I take 2-butanone and add uh, ethylamine and acid? What is my product? Well, again, in this case, anytime we can lose two hydrogens, we're going to do it. All we're doing is going to replace the oxygen with the nitrogen and lose two hydrogens. So therefore, the product will look something like this. Okay. So this will be the product that I will get. Okay. Now, what if I take this molecule here? Okay. What if I take benzaldehyde? Okay. And I add, add ethylene glycol in H3 plus an acid. Okay. What will I get? Remember we said these diols are a protecting group, so it's gonna actually ring. It's gonna actually ring close uh, to replace the uh, the carbon carbon double bond. So therefore, we'll get something like this. Still have our hydrogen. This is now bonded to two oxygens, and we ring close. Now, again, this video is only for practice purposes. We've went through the mechanisms on the other video, so by now we're just using this as a practice. Okay. Now remember we talked about oxygen chemistry. So if I take uh, if I take uh, acetone and I add okay hydroxylamine and acid, what's going to be the product? Well, again, nitrogen is always a better nucleophile than oxygen uh, than, uh, than oxygen, right? So I'll get my nitrogen to replace my 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 oxygen, and I'll simply lose two hydrogens, and I get my oxygen back. Okay, so hopefully you guys are really seeing the pattern with these. Hopefully you guys are really seeing the pattern with these. Okay. Now let's look at, let's react to butanone again with uh, ethanol and acid. Okay. What will I get? Remember, we can't ring close, but we're going to get addition twice to the carbonyl uh, carbon. Okay. And we're going to lose our double bond. So product for this must look something like this. Okay. And again, the mechanisms are in uh, the previous videos. So again, this is just only serves as a practice. Okay. And we're going through the different patterns that we should see and it will make organic chemistry easy. Okay. Now I also want to show you something. If I take formaldehyde, this is formaldehyde, okay? If I take formaldehyde and add water, okay? If I take formaldehyde and add water, I actually get formalin, okay? So I get two addition of alcohol, okay? Formalin, okay? So again, hopefully you could see the pattern. I get two addition, and here's my hydrogen. I'm sorry about that. Here's my hydrogen. So I actually get actually get formalin, okay? And this 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 is a hundred percent composition. So this, this reaction will go forward. Okay, let me see what other uh, chemistry I have here. So let's look at some let's look at some hydrolysis. Okay, so let's look at some hydrolysis. So what if I take this compound here and I hydrolyze it in acid? 
what will be my product. Well, again, to me, it looks as if I'm going to have my ketone back. Plus, well, I needed to lose two hydrogen in order for this compound to be formed. So this has to come from ethylamine. So these will be the two products of the reaction. Okay, now let's look at one that kind of slightly deviates from the rule. Okay, so if I take cyclohexanone and I add uh, uh, dimethylamine, okay, if I add dimethylamine and the molecule looks something like this, if I add dimethylamine and acid, what would be the product that we would get? Now, notice in this situation, my nitrogen is still my nucleophile but I don't have an addition of two hydrogens to lose. So therefore something else will happen. So this will not be your, your typical losing nitrogen, losing two hydrogens. And, and, and no, that's not how this reaction occurs. So the product for this will look something like this. We have a nitrogen that's bonded to two, hydrogen, uh, two ethyl groups, and we're gonna form a double bond right adjacent to the nitrogen. Okay, so and this is called an enamine okay so this is called an enamine and let's 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 quickly briefly go over the mechanism of, of, of what happens okay so uh if you throw this molecule in solution okay if we throw it in solution with acid we know the first thing that's going to happen is protonation okay the carbonyl, we know that's the first thing that will happen. So these electrons will come in and take off one of the hydrogens and form water in solution. Okay, so we get an oxygen that has a plus charge. Okay, now in the second step, nitrogen is very nucleophilic. Okay, we know that. So it will now come, the lone pairs will come and attack the carbonyl and we form the alcohol. Okay, now in this point, I'm just skipping steps here. In this point, I get something look like this, okay? I form my alcohol, okay? And this is now bonded to a nitrogen that has two CH3s and the hydrogen. So nitrogen, four bonds, automatic plus one charge. Now water will come in and act as a base and take off the proton and, and give the molecule a neutral state, okay? So now we're in a state that looks something like this. We have a hydrogen uh, or alcohol group and it's now, the nitrogen now has two CH2s around it, so it's neutral. So, what do you guys think will happen next in the, in the reaction, okay? In order for this reaction to go forward, we have acid in solution, okay? And the lone pairs on the oxygen will actually come in and take one off, okay? And so we form... Uh, we get an oxygen that has two hydrogen plus one formal charge, and we still have our nitrogen that has a CH3, two CH3s. Now, unlike in the other case, we can't just lose water like that, okay? We, we can't just lose water like that. So what will end up happening is that water will take off the hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen uh, um, adjacent to where the, the alcohol, the, the water group is bonded to. And so water will come in and act as a very strong base, take off the nitrogen, form a double bond, and expel the leaving group. Okay, and so that's why we get to a product that looks like this. Okay, and this video was not meant for uh, <laughs> mechanisms purposes, but I just wanted to show you how we got to that. Okay, so maybe if I asked you, okay, well, React cyclohexanone, okay, maybe if I ask you to react cyclohexanone with this compound here, an acid, what will I get? Well, if I look again, if I look at this, I notice my nitrogen does not have an excess of two hydrogen. So we can't just do our usual and replace the, the double, uh, replace the, the oxygen with nitrogen and, and lose our two hydrogen and just draw the rest of the molecule, no. In this case, again, we only have an excess in a, in, in, of one hydrogen, so therefore we know we're actually going to form the enemy, okay? So we're going to get a bond to nitrogen, which has this R group on it, okay? And we form a double bond.
Okay, so this would be the product that we'll get. And again, these reactions are not very hard as long as we could we could we could see as long as we could see what is going as long as we could see the process, then we know what's going on. Okay, so what if I take acetone again? And I react it with aniline. Okay, if I take acetone and react it with, with aniline, okay, in some sort of acid, what will I get? Well, we know what we're gonna get. We're gonna replace. Now we could lose two hydrogens. So again, the product should look something like this. We're gonna lose our oxygen. Okay, we're just gonna draw the phenyl group. Now in this case, I'm just gonna write pH just for, uh, just to save space. Okay. So that's what will happen in, in this case. Now let's let's look at some hydrolysis. So what if I have this molecule here? Yeah, yeah, and I hydrolyze it in acid. Well, it looks to me initially I had a ketone, okay, and we added uh, methanol, okay. We added methanol. So notice I'm getting back my ketone and I and methanol was my nucleophile that attacked twice. Okay, so that's how we go about uh, uh, neutralizing the molecule. Now I want to talk about uh, uh, the form of the phenylhydrazine derivative. So again, <coughs> or semi-carboxides. So if I look at this, what if I take benzaldehyde? Now, semi carboxide looks something like this. It's a molecule that has two, uh, the NH, the amine group here. We have an NH bond, okay? We have, a, we have a carbonyl, okay? We have a carbonyl that is bonded to an NH2, okay? Now, what is, what is, what, what is going to end up happening? Well, again, the nitrogen that is furthest away from the actual carbonyl compound will be your nucleophile, okay? So it happens that this is way more nucleophilic than the the, 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 amine group, uh, the amine group adjacent to the carbonyl. And so we'll get something that looks like this. We'll lose an excess of two hydrogens, okay? We'll lose an excess of two hydrogens and then just redraw the rest of the structure. Okay, so this is my um, semi carboxide and this is my semi carbazone okay so that's how we found uh semi uh uh carbazone and, and and okay so that's how we form semi carbazone now if we take two butanone and we add nh2 nh2 okay this is actually hydrazine so this is hydrazine this is hydrazine, yeah, hydrazine. Uh, this is actually rocket fuel, okay? So this is what they use in rocket fuel. This is actually rocket fuel. And we add acid. Well, again, I'm gonna lose an excess of two hydrogens, okay? And I form my hydrazone, okay? So again, you can see that these chemistries are not difficult as long as we see the pattern, as long as we see the pattern. As long as we see the pattern. Let's talk about one more. So if I take benzaldehyde, okay, if I take benzaldehyde, okay, if I take benzaldehyde and I add phenylhydrazine, okay, phenylhydrazine looks something like this. We have our, uh, we have our, um, uh, no, actually, yeah, let's react it with aniline, okay? Let's react it with aniline, okay? So if I take benzaldehyde and react it with aniline and acid, uh, again, I lose an excess of two hydrogens, okay? And I form my phenyl ring, okay? So again, these chemistries are not difficult. Um, the main the main thing that I want you to get away from this uh, this lesson here is the idea of the pattern that, that, that I just explained. The patterns are, are, are what we should be able to see um, and, and kind of explain and kind of explain. So the patterns that we should see.